Hey here. All right, folks, we're live. David Palfreyman, and it is a real pleasure today to bring to you a live interview with an old friend and colleague, Linda Simmons. Now, for those of you who don't know the name, I'm sure many of you already do, Linda is an award-winning agent. She's based in Devonport, and uh, for those of you who don't know Devonport, it's a lovely seaside village that is in the high end in and of itself of Auckland. Um, but Linda specializes in amazing marketing campaigns. In fact, she's been awarded or the finalist multiple times for the REINZ uh, Multimedia Campaign Award. So nationally recognized for her marketing. Uh, and she managed to go from being an unknown, a, a brand new person in real estate almost seven years ago, straight into the high end. So um, that's going to be interesting. And not only that, she's an absolute top performer, a, a lovely lady. She ranks in the top 40 for Baileys nationally, and she is in the top three for the entire North Shore for Baileys. So uh, there's no question the credibility here. But on top of all of that, Linda is just such a special person. She's got an amazing philosophy, which I can't wait to dig into today. Uh, and so a very warm welcome to you, Linda. Thank you for doing this. Thank you very much. <laughs> How can I help? Well, so maybe I think it'd be interesting for people to know a little bit more about your story. So what, why did you, I mean, you were a high-flying executive with Nestle. Uh, what made the shift to getting into real estate? Okay, so I, yeah, a bit of background. I had a 20-year career with Nestle, and uh, that started off in, in the UK. And with Nestle, I was marketing chocolate brands. So it's pretty, you know, when you market what you love, um, to an extent, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it's feels at times like it's just um, the best thing you could possibly be doing. And so I spent 20 years of my life working for Nestle Marketing Chocolate Brands and started off in the UK and then came to New Zealand as, as part of my career, then on to Australia, and then ultimately based in our head office in Switzerland. And from Switzerland, I was actually part of a global team that went into the markets around the world to help them with their marketing. So uh, it was a really amazing um, career and a fantastic time in my life. But it's really interesting because what I learned through all of that is the importance of understanding people and understanding needs. And, you know, it might seem simple to market a bar of chocolate when there's so many out there and they basically cost the same. You really have got to get to the heart of what that bar of chocolate is all about if you want people to to buy yours above somebody else's. And I was the brand manager for KitKat Globally, which is the biggest chocolate brand. So I had a lot of time and um, understanding of the importance of understanding consumers and, and what they want. Uh, came back to New Zealand and because we had children <laughs> and my career was, was global and I was always on planes and always traveling. And by the time my kids were four and five, I realized that was just not the kind of life that I was able to lead anymore. And we wanted to bring our children up in New Zealand and give them a true Kiwi experience. So we, we came back to New Zealand. And um, for the first few years, I just worked um, within our local community. Don't, don't work, I, you know, I ran the netball team at school and things like that. Just was a mum for a, a few years and then wanted to get back into doing something. And I kept on bumping to an ex-colleague of mine who suggested that um, I join her in real estate. She was an ex-Nestle colleague. And so um, I thought, well, that sounds like fun. I'll give it a go. And went off and I did the training. And um, so that sounds I, like uh, fun. Hang on a second. It's, uh, you know, you, you've had the high power job for lots of travel. You enjoyed being a mum. You need something to sink your teeth into. Uh, and, and did you think that there would be parallels between what you're doing before and, and real estate or just thought it would be fun? I don't know. You strike me. I, you kind of, you seem a little competitive to me. To be honest, I probably didn't realize how hard it was going to be <laughs> because um, what, what I thought sounded fun about it was to be able to work in my local community and mm. to do something that brought people joy. Because from what I could see, you know, if you're helping someone to sell their home or someone to buy a home, that's a very exciting part in everyone's life. And I just like the idea of being a part of that. And trying to help people has really been my ethos all along. And I think when I thought about going to real estate, I sat back and said, well, you know, what would make people choose me? Why do I deserve to be chosen as an agent? I had a quick look at our local market and I discovered there were 
a lot of agents, around 50 agents already servicing this area. So I looked mm. at what they were doing and I didn't just look at Devonport, I actually looked at what agents were doing nationally and what agents were doing internationally to try and work out what I felt I could bring to the industry because for me to just be another real estate agent wasn't going to crack it. There's enough choice out there and there's some very, very good agents already working in this area. So what, you know, what right have I got to come in and think that people should use me? So mm. they should only really use me if I can bring something different, something better and um, something, yeah, something that would really, really help them to achieve their results. And it, it really came down to what I understood that I felt other people were missing was that buying and selling a home is one of the most emotionally traumatic journeys that you can go through in your life you know it's, it's a big big thing and so many people or agents in particular don't respect how emotional that journey is and nor do they capitalize on it so mm. for me to um you know when you look at the classic marketing of real estate it's it's pictures and it's words and it's very features based and very um, detached. And if anything, the advice given is to you know, neutralize homes, make them don't, remove the personality from the home. Whereas my um, approach, it, I, I worked out very early, was, was gonna be very different to that because I think people in homes are part of the home. And I don't think people buy buildings. I don't think they buy houses. I think they buy lifestyle and they buy homes. So the more that you can do to actually understand really well what the home is about and really well what the life is about and the better you can communicate that the more you can tap into people's emotions and actually help them to make the choices in their life going forward and that's whether about whether it's about when to sell and what to sell for or what to buy and, ha and how to buy it's a very well, Linda, emotional you, journey if i can just draw a couple of threads here so yeah. listening to you tell your story uh when you were marketing, full stop, yeah. your, your belief is that marketing is really about understanding people. And you, you perceived when you were kind of doing a bit of research on, you know, would this be fun? <laughs> um, that maybe there, is, there was a gap even in a very highly competitive marketplace because it seemed to you that uh, perhaps agents either didn't emphasize or capitalize mm. on that emotionally charged journey. For, for people both selling and buying uh, and, and you thought, well, I, I can, I can do this. Mm. And, and now with the benefit of hindsight, do you think your perception, how, how, what would you add now looking back on what you thought, you know, eight years ago to what you believe now? Mm. I, I think when you first start out as an agent or, you know, someone trying to sell homes, you're so anxious in many ways to, to get a listing and, and, and to get to get going and your first and surely you experienced that as well yeah you know sort of oh gosh i'm yeah you, a little bit of anxiety about what, what's my first listing how am i how am i going to get it for me um you know what's become incredibly apparent the more time i spend is that the last thing you should be focusing on is how to get the listing <laughs> that's the last thing you should be on your mind and if you focus instead on how can i help these people to get the best results for them um the listing is just an outcome of that and the success right, is, so is just important. an outcome of helping people to get That's the best results such a big point it's such mm -hmm. a big point yeah and, and i'm sorry i spoke over you i'd love you to say that again success is yeah well it, it's about if your if your whole mindset when you get calls because i tend to get called in there rather than you know, pushing for calls. When I get called and asked to go in, um, to a home to appraise it or whatever, um, the last thing on my mind, way back on my mind, is oh, how do I get this listing? Who am I up against? I don't even think about that. I think instantly, like, how can I help you? And if you go, you know, on the very first meeting with a client, um, you know, we walk in the door, chat. They, either, I've either met them before or I haven't. And the my kind of goal now in that very first um, meeting about the prospect of perhaps selling their home is that I say as little as possible. I'm only allowed to speak if I ask questions. <laughs> so if you try that, and so you go in and as soon as you walk through the door, the first thing you say is, hi, nice to meet you. Uh, how, how, how can we help? And it's, 
it's, it's fascinating what comes out of that because it's not the question they're expecting. And also- Guys, kind of can I just press pause? Uh, very quickly, because I, I don't want this moment to pass by without the point being absolutely writ large here. Mm. Approaching a listing, going, how do I win this, mm. is a frame of mind which, if picked up on, which I'm sure most people pick up on, mm. comes across as, uh, in the words of Tom Panos, commission breath, or someone mm. else's, they, they just seemed a bit desperate. Or, you know, and even if it doesn't come across as desperation, the difference of, of the shift in the way that that relationship is both established and then mm. grows mm. is so fundamentally different when you come at it with the approach of how can I help? Yeah, and, it's, so di it's uh, so different. And, and yeah. the... You know, if you go in with a mindset of how can I win the listing, you know, straight away you're going to be thinking, what commission rate are my competitors offering? Are they offering free advertising? And so, you know, you're kind of almost waiting for people to ask you for all those things. But I just don't even think about that. I just go in and say, right, no, tell me, tell me where you're at in life. Like, what was it you can do? And I'm going to give some pushback here. Just on, just, on, just on behalf of the salesperson who sits and watches this and says, yeah, sure, but you're Linda Simmons who's won awards for marketing and you're the number one agent in the office and you've got the biggest market share in Devonport. You, you're all very well and good for you to approach it like that. I just want to, can you, can you take us back? And, back to the and early days. Through? Yeah, okay, so exactly. I will, I will, I, I'll go back to those early days because um, I, I worked out then that I did need to offer something different. So we did touch on this and I went off on a tangent. I did need to offer something different. And there were two things that I felt were opportunities um, in the marketplace. And one was to bring emotion into the way that we market homes. So from the very, very beginning, I adopted a strategy of using very emotional marketing. And back then, I, I was one of the first agents, I was definitely the first agent in the area, um, probably one of the first in Auckland to be using video. But the way I used video was was kind of a shock to everyone. And, and I didn't understand why everyone was so surprised, but what I did that was different was that I asked the owners of the property to speak on video about what they loved about their home. And I did that for my very, very first video. And it was incredibly powerful because they were able to communicate directly with the audience that we were talking to about what made their home so special and many of those videos you know like brought tears to people's eyes when they watched them and my very first listing was a couple who lived in their family home for 45 years and they shared the stories of bringing their children up in that home and it it was remarkable because that home then went on to be bought by a young family who had literally just commissioned a renovation on their little villa down the road in Devonport. And that was their journey. They were going to live in that villa. And then they, they watched this video of this couple who'd been in this home for 45 years and how they brought their family up there. And they fell in love with the idea of actually living in that home and basically went to the auction, bought it. They were not looking. They saw a street fly. They watched the video. They fell in love with the idea of living there. And then they renovated their house, put it on the market, sold it, and moved in. So it was completely and utterly unplanned and impulse purchase. Um, and it was driven by the, I guess, the emotion that that couple expressed in, in that very first video. So that was one angle that I took to start off with. And I used and to- And let's just hone on this quickly, because I think for those who don't know, and I'm sure if you go and check out Linda Simmons' videos, you'll see these. But uh, I remember distinctly at the time, because of the company you were working for, uh, I remember they were like, oh, how is she getting such good results with what she's doing with this? Let's look at it closely. And I had the privilege of doing some work with you on that. Yes. And I uh, I know some of those questions you used to ask people, but the key part here, I mean, you could ask any sort of question that, that centers around extracting the emotive stories about the people who live there. Yeah. And people connect with stories. Yeah. And the, if you think about old um, advert writing technique, it was kind of like, well, features tell benefits sell but i think when it goes to another higher level of that it's actually well sure benefits sell but a story really catches the attention of someone and, yes. and it's that emotive part that makes the decisions to actually do something yeah. like yeah. 
what, uh, what else would you say is, about what you've learned about videos from that, yeah. that kind of origin story of using a video to what you do now or what, what you think works best? It's funny that the very first video I made got such high hits that um, everyone in the company I worked for, the managing director, Dan, I was getting constant phone calls asking people how I was getting so many, not only, not only so many hits, but um, the um, average, what well, people were basically watching the video the time. through to the end <laughs> mm-hmm. instead of switching off after the first few seconds. So, and it's not about the length of the video. The, it's it's actually the about the exactly. Yeah, and people love stories. And what? And you what, got you got hits on that video. Though I remember this. I think this is such a good thing to remind people of. Linda got hits on that video because she hand wrote on yeah. a just listed card. <laughs> watch the video. With yeah, in those days, you know, no one was using go. video, and if they were, they weren't very exciting. And but so, it's yeah. Media. You don't, you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater here in the sense that you you know you were using new new at the time yeah. um you know strategies but you you were also using more traditional methods yeah because i had to get i had to get the videos watched because i knew that they were a powerful way of marketing the property but people weren't used to watching videos i mean you couldn't even they weren't even on trade me you kind of had to divert to the agency website to see the video it's quite hard work to see a video in those days so i actually now, delivered videos a dime, it with a handwritten message about my kids i said i paid my kids five dollars an hour to write view video online um because otherwise people never knew it was there <laughs> it, worked. it worked it worked it worked so yeah. but i mean video then more original i'm sorry not so much original but it was newer now videos a dime a dozen i mean most fully marketed campaigns probably include a video yeah. uh, to at least my mind watching them a lot of them are just kind of glorified slideshows even yeah. if they are actual video there's still not a lot going on yeah. i mean what, what's your perception of okay, where so the industry is currently and where it could or should or where you take it look everyone uses video now because we've all been told to use video and it's taken years and years and also because of COVID of course it was hard to go and see properties so the rate the use of video went up and up but the videos are generally I'd say 95% still um, pictures and music and really you can scroll through the picture reel yourself you don't need to watch the music with it and they whiz around and kind of get a little bit seasick and I just that for me is not um, it's not, not doing anything to, to tug on heartstrings. You sell homes because you sell a life and you tug on people's heartstrings. It's not about what the property looks like. I mean, it's just- Tell us more about how you do that. So you know, this is, I this did is start off by in your current strategy. Yeah, I did start off by insisting that um, vendors, you know, the owners were in, in my videos and then I worked out I was losing a lot of business because people were terrified of being on camera. <laughs> so I'm a little bit less insistent now. But I still do go through the same process of interviewing owners very clearly. I have four questions that I ask that get that that tell the story of the home. You know, what made what you questions? buy this home? What do you love about living in this home? Tell me about some special moments that you've had in this home. I mean, those those kind of questions get them What's talking. What's the fourth? Or do I and miss that's it? when I actually learn about what makes that home special. And from that, then I can pick up on it and work out what the, I guess, the unique selling proposition is for that home. Because for me, a home is a brand, like a chocolate bar. It's just a brand. But you need to get to the heart of what that home is about if you're going to market it in a way that makes people draw, you know, buy into the emotion of owning that home. And another magical thing about it is if you do involve the owners in the development of the video, whether or not they're on camera, they feel understood. And they feel that their message about their home has been communicated well. So they relax into the process and they trust you. There's nothing worse than going into get a listing and then you take the marketing away and they don't, it doesn't do it for them. You know, yeah. You're selling someone's life and you have to respect their part in the history of that home. And it's, it, you know, they, they, vendors basically love the videos and so do buyers and of course they then share them <laughs> and they push them out into the, the social media network as well so i mean video has been a key part of my business but not just video it's the way that i market the poems it's the way that i tug on people's heartstrings using video to tell the story of the home for me it's the video does not repeat the words i don't talk about number of bedrooms i don't even film all the bedrooms I literally film the story of the home. Yeah, and to just 
very kind of um, bring a little bit of wrap around this. You do that, yes, you you would and have interviewed owners, but even where the owners are not appearing in your video, that interview with the owners does a couple of things, and I'm, I'm hearing it here. Yeah, it's the it's the. Sorry, what did you say? It's the it's the same process, whether or not yes, it's on the same process or not. Exactly, it's the same process. It's about getting them to explain to me what's special and unique about that home, so that I can. So you're developing the this the strongest kind of rapport here because the the owners know that you know about their emotional connection to the yeah. home, and they also get that you are now using that to to draw in the next uh the next owners and yeah. th they th that that professional rapport that's developed through that must just solidify the relationship even further from where not only have you won the listing and obviously yeah. brought that to a point where they trust you enough to to yeah. entrust you but also now you're kind of solidifying it into that marketing strategy so that they and i imagine i mean i know the market has been so strong of late but in a marketplace where perhaps things are tighter, when the vendors believe that you have done everything you possibly could to promote yeah. their property, when the yeah. vendors believe that you got it and that you yeah. conveyed it to purchasers, it's much easier when it comes to delivering feedback and actually presenting interest because they know that you've done your work. Whereas yeah. if there's a disconnect there between the vendors buy into your marketing strategy, uh, that makes it so much harder. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what you're saying, David, is so true. And that's another... I think fundamental part of the whole way that um, uh, I, we do this is, is that um, I, I've got a team working with me, so it's not just me. I want that to be clear. Mm. It, um, I'm, I'm the lead agent, but I've got my amazing sister um, working alongside me too. And she actually did the training with me. When I first told her I was going to do real estate, she told me I was absolutely off my head and she would never see me. And in the morning she rang me. And now said, she's doing it too. <laughs> what are you thinking? You're still going to do it? And I said, yes, okay, well, I'll do it too. And so she actually joined me right back then. But she's dyslexic and there's no way that she would want to cope with the paperwork and the administration and all that, all the legal stuff that's involved. But she's a brilliant, um, I, I guess, addition to my team. And we're very, together, we're quite, we're very different in what we bring, but we're, we're very powerful. And the key thing I want to, we want to make happen is that with every listing, um, we we basically make a team with the vendors and we kind of work out, you know, if this, say it's a husband and a wife, you know, who's going to be the CEO and who's going to be the CFO, like which one's into numbers, which one's into business. And then I just say, like, I'm, you know, I'm your, I'm your marketing manager and um, Jackie, my sister, she's operations because Jackie has a very specific role, which I'll talk about too. Um, we run a whole get ready for market service through Jackie. So it's another point of difference that just... I found to be completely lacking. I, I found agents often come in and say, okay, great, got listing, thanks very much. Uh, photos, 22nd of February, see you then. And then, ah, oh, freak. And the poor owners have to go through all this stress about how to get ready and what to do. Whereas we, through Jackie, run a complete get ready for market service. So basically the minute we start talking to them, it's how can we help? Um, do we need a house wash? Do we need this? Uh, we, Jackie has all the context. Jackie coordinates the whole thing and they can just go to work and, and, and the, it just happens in the background. Get so done. I'm off tracking a bit here, but basically we form a team with the vendors and the whole way through, we are a team. And every discussion we have, it's about a result that we're all going to get together. And, and I think when you involve them from the start in the marketing by understanding them and listening to them, um, they, if people feel understood, <laughs> it makes a big difference. And if you look at, I mean, another Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, um, you know, one of the habits is seek to understand before being understood. Mm. And I think a lot of the time agents talk too much and they want to tell you how good they are and what discounts they can give you and how good everything is that they will do versus other people instead of finding out what people want. You know, if you understand what people want, you might not have to give any of that stuff away because that doesn't matter. And we had a really classic, I'll tell you the story because it was really recent. The very, my current listing has just gone live. Um, they called me up, I'd never heard from them before. Um, we went to see them and we walked in to the first meeting. And I said, hi, lovely to meet you. Like, um, how can we help? First question. And I couldn't believe what they said. They said, when you do viewings of our home, which kind of indicates they already made a decision, 
when you do viewings of our home, how will you handle our dog? <laughs> and I went, what? And they said, well, they looked at me and I said, well, where's the dog? And they said, oh, confiscated to the back room. It's like so badly behaved. So I said, well, Jackie, let's go. And we went to see the dog. We went and we spent 10 minutes with the dog was completely crazy, like just so excited. And you, you can't have a dog like that in viewings. So we spent 10 minutes getting to know the dog, calming the dog down. And then we went back out and said, uh, the answer to that question is that if there's viewings at your property, one of us will walk the dog while the other one does the viewing. And I, they said, great. And then we went from there through everything, but everything was whiz, 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 where do we sign? And they kind of, they knew I had a dog basically. And so they felt that perhaps I could do that. But the way we handled that dog conversation was the reason that they didn't trust us to run the whole thing. It was, and it, it was it, a shock. And <laughs> so I think that the real little tweak here, and you, you picked up on it as well, but they said, you know, how, you know, paraphrasing, how will we handle it? How will we look after the dog when you do viewings? <laughs> so it's kind of like, oh. yeah, so it's almost like this assumption, great, I'm going in on this. But actually, the, imagine if you were so G'd up to win the listing yeah. that you go, okay, we'll sort it out. And, you know, we've got great market share and, yeah, yeah. you know, we can offer you a really competitive, whatever. And yeah. actually, really what they cared about was. Yeah, because all the time they're thinking, you know, and also in, in those meetings where you talk about like the next meeting that you go back to, I, I very much make sure I run that meeting again according to questions. So I'll go and say. So we... one point quickly. Yeah. Uh, so we, we're moving into almost like talking about a first meeting and it sounds like you do a second meeting. But before we go there, I remember you mentioning this right at the back of our conversation today and you've come back to the same point. But you said something which I had a little chuckle about and I wanted to come back to, which is. Um, and I don't know if it's a, a slight exaggeration, but you, you said something along the lines of, it's like I'm only allowed to speak yeah, if, if I I'm ask questions. questions. Yeah. So how, how serious that? are you on that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I don't achieve it, but I try. <laughs> because if in that first meeting, you talk too much, you don't find out what you need to say when you go back. Whereas if you ask questions, and it's not just questions like, have you had previous experience of auctions? I mean, they're the obvious questions. Um, it's questions like, uh, you know, what would make it easier for you when you go on the market? Um, have you found the home that you're looking for? What's really, I mean, the, the, a huge one is, tell us what's so special about your home. What have you loved about living here? Those questions help you to understand what you need to go back with. Because when you go back, you then talk in order about what matters to them rather than what you think they want to hear. And a lot of the time, you know, they don't necessarily want the lowest commission. And certainly my, um, I have evidence of that because I never offer the lowest commission, ever. Bailey's rates, I won't go into Bailey's rates, but I never offer the lowest commission. And I even cover that point off with them how do you you know, the first, I just say, by the way, you know, I, I, I trust you're going to see other agents because I like people to see other agents because I think it's important that they see other agents so they actually have a basis of comparison and a reason of confidence as to why they've chosen you. I mean, if they really want to use me because they've heard all about me, great. But, you know, most of the time I encourage people to actually see other agents too. And I, um, I just say to them, by the way, you will get offered lower commission rates than we offer you will get offered free advertising. That's not necessarily something that we do, but there's lots of things that we do. I'm just letting you know what you're going to hear about when you see other people. And I think it's best to cover it off like that because at the end of the day, you've got to actually demonstrate value. And for me, the easiest way to get a listing or the easiest thing to do, it's not easy, the easiest thing to do is to give discount and to give free advertising. But everyone can do that. It's just, all you have to do is open your mouth and say, I'm, I'm giving that. But to prove why marketing is needed is more important and to prove why spend is needed is more important and to prove why you are needed is more important. And then they have confidence. People don't always want the cheapest. They want to know that they're going to get the best result. It, it, Linda, it's very easy for us to sit here and talk about that. And I like you sharing about how you kind of say, um, you know, trust you're going to see other agents. And so, you know, um, you're going to be offered discounted rates and people are going to offer to pay for marketing. Uh, can I just inquire into how the 
consumer responds and maybe a variety of responses there, how do you then take that to, to fruition? When they say, okay, well, and why, why wouldn't you do that? Well, they either have seen other agents so they smile and say, say they know. But for me, I, I just cover it off by saying, for, for example, on the, on the marketing side, you know, free marketing can be offered because it's basic marketing and it's actually not very strong marketing. The way I cover off making sure we get sufficient funds to do a good marketing campaign is I am very careful in the way I take them through the comparative market analysis, the, the value of the home. So again, rather than me springing them with a number that I think the home's worth, what I do is I do a lot of, I don't like numbers, but I, do, I force myself to actually be really on top of the market. And every single home that I look at the value of, I do a lot of work and looking at the comparable sales and really detailing really making my head get around exactly what each home offers that is different or worse than this home. So it's not just about size of land and size of house. It's about each of those homes. What was the flow like in the home? Who was the buyer? Was it an expat or was it a local? What was the circumstances in that auction? Was it a pre-auction offer or not? Because all of those things actually influence the end price, not just the stats. Mm -hmm. So I really go in with a clear understanding. So what I do is I share when I share the CMA, I will talk about the value of the home, which by the way, I always cover off first in the second meeting, because they're not actually going to listen to you until you've told them what you think the home's worth, because they're not interested in anything else, not how much it's going to make. So they, um, we cover off each of those homes. I go through, we discuss the homes and say, this is what this home's like, this is the situation, cover it all off. And then I say to them, before I tell you where I think your home sits in value terms, where do you think it sits? And then, <laughs> and I make them answer the question before I tell them my number. And they're very uncomfortable because they don't want to. And finally, they'll either, what I find is they'll either come up with pretty much the range that I've come up with because they've listened to me and the discussion we've had, or they'll come up with a much higher price. And then I look at them and say, where did that come from? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't get, I don't yeah. get that. Where, well, what makes you say that? Do you know what's, do you know what's <laughs> funny is I bet you there's people watching this right now who go, yeah, that's exactly what I thought when they said that too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but and you say, open your mouth and I proceed say, like, to say it. Where'd that number come from? And they kind of giggle and then say, well, like, it's kind of like, it's what we want. And I said, great. Okay. At least we know it's what you want rather than what you think that is an automatic. So if you want a higher price, then you, then you understand might be average, you know, might be achievable. How are we going to do that as a team? What do we do? So we have to make sure your home is brilliantly presented and we have to make sure your home is really well marketed because if we want the highest price, we have to have the highest number of people competing because high price is actually more about how many people fighting for it than anything else. So to get people fighting for a home in an auction, you have to have multiple bidders. To get multiple bidders, you have to have a strong marketing campaign and you have to have a perfectly presented product, which is your home. So all of a sudden they then engage in the process, which is, oh, we've got to do everything we can to get the highest price. And then you don't have to argue about whether or not marketing is free. You just say it's needed. Isn't it needed yet? Yeah, we need it. That's not much money to spend to get that. And off you go. Yeah. So you've got to get them to buy into the strategy and to own it with you. Because otherwise they just think, you know, you're trying to rip them off. Well, I mean, no, look, I'm not being rude about clients. It's not their fault, but the industry perpetuates this kind of image of agents and it's, it's often well-founded. You know, yeah, and I think, what, what, well, what? agents just want to make the most money and let you spend the most money and whatever. I mean, that, there's a lot of that out there. And I think that it's really important that people understand why they need to spend money in order to get the most people to compete on their home to get the highest price. And we're all, we're yeah. all a team. Uh, we never have a kind of like agent vendor relationship. It's, it's, it's so much about team. You're sitting on the same side of the table. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like, you know, something that I'm picking up just listening, you know, you, you clearly, whilst you're an amazing operator, I, I, I'm just telling you as you're watching this, guys, I, I think of Linda as a thought leader and, um, you know, we've consulted, um, you, know, you know, privately talking about different things when I've encountered, you know, opportunities to speak at conferences and these things because I really rate the way um, she approaches it. And I, and I know you'll pick up on this, but Linda's drawing comparisons here where if you were to look at the black and white, okay they've got a marketing investment of x they paid x fee and they got x result 
but the experience of the customer interacting with and when i say customer the the vendor um or, or the buyer the customer um but the but i'm picking here that the the way that you actually got to that one could be coming from a place of some carefully scripted um very salesy tactics to try and get a marketing investment or to try and retain the fee or whatever it might be oh. but what what I hear Linda doing, and this is what I really enjoy, is approaching this from going, well, how do we actually achieve an outside result in the market? Mm. Okay. And consulting with the client to not just tell them what she thinks, but also ask them what they think mm. and actually explore the reality of it, which leads them to understanding that of the factors that influence what a property sells for, marketing is an important one. And in doing so, you know, solidifying her position side of table with the client as the person that represents in the market to go and do that. Uh, and I just fundamentally, um, the the um, the fruit of that that continues to go out there uh, are clients that will rave about the experience. Mm. And here's the real critical piece to my mind is that whilst you cannot control the outcome, you do have influence on it. Mm. And if the client appreciates your um, concern and dedication to to exerting that influence, then regardless of what that out outcome actually manifests in being, you've been on that journey with them, and I think you have a better time at the end when the dealing is done mm. than if you've approached it in a different way. That, that's mm. kind of my take on it. But yeah. um, Linda, tell me a little bit more as you kind of think about the the things that you've seen and and the, and where you see both yourself going and perhaps you know other great operators in the business. What, what's what's the evolution of this? Um, I think the industry, and it's not just me, I think the industry as a whole is, is evolving into understanding that um, it's not about us <laughs> at all. Uh, it's, it's about us helping people to get the best result. And we've got a, you know, unfortunately it's a commission-based role, commission-based industry. And commission-based jobs can attract people who are commission-focused, um, or do it does attract people who are commission-focused. It's unusual to find people that aren't necessarily as commission-focused, but I think that there's evidence loud and clear to say that it, you know, the more that you focus on helping people to get the result, the more people will buy into the whole process with you, and and you've got to make the journey fun. You know, it's really important that it's fun. Because no one chooses. How do you how do you do that? So uh, as much as I'm enjoying our conversation, it's it still doesn't sound super fun. I've got this little. <laughs> I've got it like one of my recent listings. Um, just as we were about to make the video with the clients in it, um, my videographer. By the way, I've worked with the same videographer all my career, and he's just amazing. He's an absolute superstar. Um, and um, he just asked these clients uh, what it was, you know, how they were feeling about choosing me as their agent. And it's like about a one and a half minute video, but it kind of encapsulates so much about, I, I watched that and he, I didn't even know who's doing it. I was like off somewhere else in the house and their words kind of encapsulate, um, they help me to like, help me to crystallize what it is that we bring. And um, it's worth a little watch of that video. I don't know how I can send it to you, David. Yeah, yeah, I'll, um, I'll put a link in the comments, guys. Put a link in the comments because it's, um, me, it's only like a minute and a half, but it shows that what they said, I mean, given that we haven't even sold their house yet, we'd literally just listed it and we're about to make the video, but they talked about how um, they felt that I'd come into their lives and understood them and how they felt that um, I'd, I'd given them good time and how they felt that they were going to have so much fun on the journey and I just listened to all this thinking wow that okay that, that matters to people mm. tell me a bit more about bringing the fun um I think the fun comes from the teamwork and I think the fun comes a lot from having my sister working with me as well because I'm kind of like the very much the business side of things and she's the person that really helps them so I mean the journey of selling a home no one chooses to sell a home because it's not fun it's actually really hard work it's really stressful and no one actually says oh, I think I'll sell my home today I mean they normally have <laughs> to sell a home 
And it's either because they've found another one to buy or they're getting separated or they've lost their jobs. You know, there's negative and positive reasons about selling a home but no one even when they're even when it's a positive driver it's still like it's oh, not i'm gonna fun. have to pack exactly. all this it's, stuff it's, up i'm gonna have to get rid of this thing and gotta organize that cupboard yeah. it's seriously scary it's a really scary prospect and a lot of um agents i find um don't offer enough help on the way through that journey and what you end so up what sort of things can be offered well what what i do or what Jackie does for me, so through Jackie and my the get ready for market team, is literally we offer very, very clear guidelines or guidance on what needs to be done. So pretty much after the first or second meeting, even before we've kind of signed up, Jackie will have a front door key. And, uh, you know, obviously we're not going to use it without the permission <laughs> until it's actually listed, but let's have, have the key because, and we we go in and we actually um, our first step is to take um, our our team. We have a, a wider get ready for market team. Jackie runs them, and we take you know the key members of that team through the home. And, one and so, the, what does your team involve? Okay, well, one one the, another at this point a key member is a stylist. So she's actually um, a full on interior designer, but she uh, he, she pretty much styles every home of ours. I'm not saying stage because staging is you know. The home is, home is empty and you bring stuff in and it looks like freedom. So we're not trying to achieve that. We're trying to achieve um, the home that's being lived in, being shown to its best end result. So we will Love go it. in and we'll actually um, prepare and present, give to them a, a room by room action list of exactly what has to be done. Room by room. And that's inside and outside. And they can do it themselves or they can use other members of our team, you know, house washers, gardeners, cleaners. It, we can outsource the whole thing or they can do bits of it themselves, but it's a very clear direction on exactly what has to be done. And that's so helpful yeah. because it takes- And for stress. someone who goes, I, I love the plan. I don't want to do anything about it myself. Yeah. Well, this we deal with a lot of overseas, busy. funny enough. We actually have quite a few overseas vendors because of the service that we offer because they, they're, they're not here. <laughs> so they can't do it. So we do the whole lot. So Jackie's project manager, got yep. all the contacts and, yep. and, and that you sort of a, send a, a quote through from each of these people yep. or you just so have an service, agreed budget? The or the service that Jackie offers is not paid for, but, you know, the project management of it is not a paid thing. That's, mm. that, that, you know, as I say, added this value. Is partly why my commission is as it is, because I'm offering this as a totally extra service. The individual contractors that are used are, are paid and we put them directly in touch. You know, we, we're not clipping the ticket on the way through or invoicing mm -hmm. on we just say this is the house washer this is the garden this is this get quote you know we get the quote get everything done they choose and off they go you know nice. with our guidance but we'll let them in we'll oversee them we'll make we'll brief them we'll make sure that the results what we need it to be to have the home perfectly presented and that's that's so important because if homes aren't okay. presented to the to their max they might not get as much competition and something that I, I just, I, I know there's a big distinction, but I want to come to it so that you can make the contrast very clear that when you approach something from a, how can we help? Hmm. You don't end up just telling them everything they want to hear, but you're actually asking them questions and presenting things that which they perhaps may not necessarily be things that they wanted to hear in no. order to get them from yeah. where they are to where they need to be. Yes. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Cause it sounds like I'm just. Okay. So the things they don't so want to hear is, is your house is too cluttered. <laughs> Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, pretty much every home is. And um, look at my shelves behind me. <laughs> I'm just as bad. <laughs> hey, um, don't worry, I'm not going to pan the video. <laughs> <laughs> every home has um, clutter. But obviously, we don't use the word clutter. But so a, a key recommendation for every single listing is that a storage unit is brought on site within, you know, within a week. And, and then they, they can offload into that. So we just make everything easy. So but we have to have the hard conversations in order for them to take the steps required or to can delegate. You, can you explain, is, is, is Jackie the one that has these conversations or is that something you have together or you handle <laughs> it? Jackie's dyslexic because she has no filter. <laughs> <laughs> I just apologize in advance for what she's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I know. Like sometimes I sit back going, oh my God, I can't believe she said that. But the fact is, as long as you apologize in advance and they know that she's coming from a space of really helping people, they, they get it. You know, kind of, I wouldn't maybe be the best person to say that stuff, but she just says it and it's great. Yeah. 
they love her. You know, a lot of people say at the beginning, um, we found Jackie like so, like rude. they want to use the word rude, but at, at the end, I can tell you that they, I think they love her more than me because she made their journey fun. Because if you know, if you can de-stress people, you make it, you make it fun. So I mean, the fun I create is is by the marketing and getting them emotionally involved in that. And and ultimately that kind of marketing does get strong competition and does get strong results. We sell so many properties to expats at the moment. um, And we always have even before COVID and that's sight unseen. Now, when you're trying to sell multi-million dollar properties, I'm talking three, four, $5 million properties to people who don't even have the opportunity to come and see them, that's when you know it's important that they get the full picture. And that's why the videos I do and the way that we deal with buyers is a a fundamentally important part of of our business. And and, and on that point, there's a lot of kind of like industry ethos about, you know, we are a vendor focused business. Well, I, I ask, what does that mean? For me, we're focused on getting the best results for people and Yes, we're focused on vendors, but you also need to be focused on on buyers because without strong buyers and trust from buyers, you're not going to get the vendor the best result anyway. So we we put a lot of importance on looking after um, buyers and helping them to understand the home and what's special about it. I really love the tension in this in this. Um, spot because whilst there's a clear um, the vendor's the client and we're focused on helping them and you want to achieve outstanding results but also you're approaching this recognizing that the the customer is also our customer and treating them fairly and helping them to understand and and maybe you could share perhaps a little bit about that approach that philosophy and also uh, you know what you've learned about selling sight unseen yeah so um Sight and scene, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge because they are, you know, they're overseas and they are relying very much on, on, on your advice. And the inbuilt mechanism of most people is not to trust a real estate agent. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. Um, Especially if so, they never meet you. <laughs> well, a real estate agent. Why, why are you trust. any different? <laughs> so what we find is that we start off with, um, you know, we'll give them pricing or guidance or whatever. And How do you handle that on something that's got no price? You know, a lot of things I imagine. Well, as, as we go through the campaign, we start to under, understand where the value where the value might sit, and we're able to you know communicate um, where the value might sit, where they might need to, to be to be in in the, in the zone. And sometimes that's, by the way, that, that's normally very different from my appraisal range. Hmm. Um, Can you give I me actually, some insight into that? Let's just imagine. So you've got a property, and let's say it's sitting around the four million mark, and that's kind of where you appraised it. Mm-hmm. And you, you're now on a journey, and I don't know for argument's sake, it's going to auction. And so there is no price being promoted, but you're attracting and fielding inquiries. And the first one is, so have you got a price indication? Yeah. Okay. So well, I'll, I'll actually talk about a true life experience on this one, which is uh, the video I'm going to tell you, I've mentioned you to watch those people. We ended up getting, um, it was in 51 Church Street in Devonport. We ended up getting an unbelievable price on, on that property way out of my um my zone way way out and um what happened on that home was it was a very it was a very very special home it was owned by um artists uh very well-known new zealand artists and there was so much emotion tied up in that home so when we first appraised the property we forecast a, a sale price in the kind of mid mid maybe high twos that was what we all were kind of happy with in terms of stats um, but of course, they said they'd love more. And I said, well, so would I. <laughs> we all want more. Let's see what we can do. And as the campaign went through, it became clear to me that the that people were loving the home so much. And the video of those people was unbelievably emotional. It was seriously emotional. And we ended up with about like nine people going to bid at the auction, by which time I, you know, I, I talk a lot to buyers about what they're going to be able to pay and are they financed enough? Because another mistake often we make with buyers is not making sure that they're set up to be able to bid as high as they might need to bid. And sometimes it's because they're dealing directly with the bank and they should be dealing with the mortgage broker. So there's a lot of work that goes into understanding the buyer mix when it comes to an auction as well, to helping them to be in a position to bid as high mm-hmm. as they possibly can. And I was getting the kind of clear impression that this property was going to go, you know, probably over three after all, or, you know, even into the early threes. And so that, you know, that's from feedback from buyers. So then I'm able to tell others, 
I think you need to be prepared to bid higher than you might have thought you need to bid. You know, it's just that it's just a journey, but it's constant communication. It's not this is what the I never use the word this is what the vendors want because that's mm. one way of making sure everyone runs away. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I just say this is the kind of feeling that we're getting as to where this property value might end up being. And on, on that that particular home, it, it sold for three point nine on the day. It absolutely blew everyone out of the water. Now, and it wasn't just, it wasn't a tender where somebody paid a crazy high price. It, it was a high price as a result of multiple bidders, all of whom had fallen completely in love with that property. And for them, it was the home of their dreams, the home, their forever home. And yes, it was more than they wanted to pay, but they had to pay that because that's the, the next bid. You know, that's the next bid. Mm. And it was just the most, um, it was incredible because I played the video of the vendors that we made for the pros for the sale um, prior to the auction. So it was a packed auction room and we played that video and all the bidders were there. <clears throat> and uh, most people were already in tears because they talked about the fact that they have to leave their home of 35 years. And, and when the auction finished, um, I think pretty much everyone in the room was crying. Through shock, I was, the vendors were, the purchasers were, the underbidders were, and they were all hugging each other. The underbidder went up and hugged the vendors and everyone, <laughs> everyone was crying and, and hugging each other. And I, I put that down as one of my best ever days in real estate, because not only did we get an extremely good price for the property, we had a very um, wonderful journey all the way through and not one of those underbidders was angry with the result. They just were so happy that those people got that price. And the people who bought it, it was their dream home. For, they were just so happy that they were the ones who managed to buy it. And that for me is, you know, I hate auctions where people feel they paid too much or they didn't get enough. I, I know that's generally what happens, but for me, the best result is when everyone was just, wow, this is great. It's a, it's a wonderful case study. And Linda, if you don't mind me saying, I can see why you find this fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, but also, you know, it, it is an emotionally charged journey that you're on with, uh, with, your, with, with your clients and your customers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for sharing so generously uh, with us all. Um, can I say folks, one more thing? Please. And um, the other really important part, and this is one of the hardest things, is to balance everything with your family. Because... Mm family have to be so supportive because we're out so many hours of the day and you know and you do get tied up in the emotions of other families that you're helping and the most important thing to do is to actually make to make sure you I mean you know David you've got young kids to make sure you remember that you have a family at home and to constantly acknowledge and thank them for the support that they give us as agents because without them there's no way that I'd be able to do this. Yeah, it's a huge point. It's easy to talk about, but it's not easy to do. <laughs> no, no, but it's like, yeah, yeah. it's another constant thing that you've got to keep top of mind. Yeah. Yeah, no, well, that's I your appreciate. Health, healthy eating and all that jazz too. But you know, for me, family is fundamental to why I do this. It's for my family. Totally, a very timely reminder, folks. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Linda Simmons. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. It's been Thank a real you. pleasure. Thank you for talking to me. I'll send you that video link. Okay, sounds good. Cheers, Bye. guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Bye.